Number four, the rabbit. The southern year of the rabbit in the Mesoamerican year count corresponds to the three Chinese year signs of the tiger, the horse, and the dog. These are intensely idealistic and self-motivated year signs, which go their own way in making decisions and coming to conclusions. This triad of influence in the Chinese year cycle is often referred to as the protectors, who of which advocates fairness and diplomacy to everyone. Theirs is a promotion of peace and selfless sense of purpose in the community with which it interacts in. Loyalty to the principle of fairness is their main cause towards action for which they can be fearless fighters who go the extra mile in the battle for true justice between men and the rest of the world. This justice-seeking principle is their mark of self-motivation, since they are not readily concerned about the opinions of those that they do not demand attention from. The Mesoamerican astrological symbol of the rabbit is not complete without understanding the preceding sign of the house as the symbol of contents under pressure. The rabbit in fact becomes the symbol of the emerging contents much in the same way that a newborn child is forcefully expelled from the mother's womb, which in this case is represented by the sign of house. Indeed, a pregnant woman was comparable to a mountain in Mesoamerican cosmology, and it was represented in the codices by a beloated impregnated feline. This analysis is further reinforced when we come to understand and accept the notion of the rabbit symbol in Mesoamerica as being related to childbearing. However, my analysis here takes the idea one step further by implying that the rabbit is the child. For that matter, then, the rabbit is the beginning of a new idea and vision, one that is artistic and independent, or one that is political and created in opposition to the existing establishment. Again here, structure is symbolically represented by the house and its rigid political foundations. The rabbit is the revolution that breaks away. The alert and freshly emerging rabbit consciousness is sensitive to the feeling of being trapped within the old and outworn boundaries of the traditional modes of living and insists to move forward and break free from the old political frameworks. For that matter, the Mesoamerican rabbit symbol is specifically very human in its implications and meanings. In fact, the only detriment in changing the flint year symbol into the turkey is that there was beforehand a system of four year bearers that contained three object forms being a reed, a flint, and a house, existing in relation to one living item being the rabbit. This made the rabbit appear unique among the four, and the fact that the flint opposes the rabbit is also suggestive of an elemental symbolism. In any case, the rabbit surely represents the choice of a new direction in the world of changing political trends that manifest at many levels of human existence. Here, the idea of growing populations and their effect on current lifestyles and political change becomes somewhat obvious. Eventually, then, we can see where all forms of survival that supplement human existence through the devices of human intellect would eventually find their way under the rabbit symbol. For this matter, in ancient Mesoamerica, the rabbit could even be understood as the primary icon of symbolic communication for the various forms of communication that were implemented in the creation of stories, myths, and other artistic traditions that recorded and guided the survival intent of the human species. Thus, now establishing a firm connection between the human consciousness and the Mesoamerican rabbit symbol, we can now begin to see how and why this animal was also a symbol of intoxication. For in truth, the Aztec rabbit is consciousness itself, and more specifically, its perpetuation through temperament, or even more specifically, the heat that is created through the perpetuation of thought and emotion. The most basic terms of intoxication were in the ancient world, as they still are today, understood in the form of drunkenness. However, of course, the terms of intoxication should have many more facets than just what alcohol has to offer. The growth experience brought about by such various intoxications represents the growth experience of the emerging rabbit consciousness. The new visions and insights brought about by these shamanic rabbit journeys are in fact the basis of so much mythology, religion, and spirituality from the ancient world that continues to be translated to this day. However, because we live in a world in which we are to understand what is written rather than add to it, except when it comes to the forms of newly emerging technologies, it then becomes somewhat difficult to understand the place of the rabbit symbol in the modern world. So therefore it is essential for us to understand that the Mesoamerican rabbit is the primary symbol of an emerging artistic and political tradition within the assortment of our world and its diverse population. This emerging tradition then becomes the guiding survival intent, or moon, for the species, and being so, it is therefore the theoretical new religion and way of life breaking away from the old. In the past, this was true as well. Thus, we have the beginnings of so many numberless religions and spiritualities that were used to help assess the perspectives of mankind towards a new development.
Acknowledging this, it does not become too laborious to realize why the Aztec rabbit is also the primary symbol of unpredictability, for we really do not know where this new vision is taking us, or even if it will truly ever manifest as desired. It is merely an idea, a dream to some, and simply a hope for salvation among the world of men. Observing this close connection between the rabbit and the conscious development of man, we can then also understand why the south as the celestial direction of the rabbit was also understood as the direction of the community, and the emotional exaggerations found there in the form of celebrations and gatherings that implemented the use of intoxicating substances and other forms of information that motivated and perpetuated mass social transformations. As the animal that was chosen to represent the principle of intoxication, the sign was given over to the rulership of a goddess called Mayowell which is a word that seems to have some strong connections to the act of falling down, and therefore implying drunkenness. As the goddess of the Magway, which was used in the creation of the fermented drink of Octli, she was responsible for the birth of the 400 rabbits of the South, whose multifarious personalities symbolized the various mental states and attitudes that came about through human drunkenness. Here in this picture from the Codex Laud, she is depicted as the birth goddess, while at the same time she is shown to be the source of movement for the universe which is indicated by the turtle and serpent duality below her. The implication here is that the movement of the universe is akin to the dizziness of a drunken stupor. This notion reinforces the rabbit's principal astrological symbol with the concept of movement. In retrospect, this concept of momentum could further be applied to the movement of the heart and the feeling of love. Matlakli o Mome Shiwa Poeli, 12-fold Aztec year cycle. Below are the Aztec year signs, which are in turn interpreted within an alignment to the prevailing three well-known astrological modes, and which are also in turn designed to follow the unfoldment of the twelve-fold Chinese year count. Because of the fact that the nature of the painting revolves primarily around the foundations of the systems of Western astrology and its three modalities, it was decided for this reason that we should start with Aries first in the form of Yakapantli Chalchiwe Totalin. This in turn will emphasize the needed increment of the recognition of the three modes taking their place over each of the three different zodiacs of the Western, Chinese, and Aztec year bearers. Yakapantli Chalchiwe Totalin, the war turkey that comes before, a cardinal war turkey of conquest. As the corresponding year sign to the Chinese dragon and the zodiological Aries, the war turkey that comes before, or Yakapantli Chalchiwe Totalin, is a symbol of leadership in a mass community challenge of warfare which usually in our times tends to take on the form of management within industrialized economic ventures. Even in the case when this war turkey of conquest or the war captain is not in charge, it is nonetheless plotting and planning for the day when it is to arise. With the use of its commanding voice and the commands that emanate from its beak, a song is heard that heralds a new tomorrow with a promise to fulfill the demand for leadership that can be contemptuous to all those that surround him. The projects he foresees are of a grand scale and may indeed demand the cooperation of a great many people, or warriors, whom of which he sees no problem in telling what to do. Somehow he was born for this moment to acquire the position of the commanding spotlight, and will take no shame in stealing it from another if necessary. He will demand nothing less than unfailing loyalty from his fellow peers, and will return the favor with unbending loyalty towards the situation as well, but only as long as it is constructive. Usually the war captain's incentive is to build a hierarchy in order to make things work on a mass level of society where stratified clan organizations can prove to hold sway over dictating the rules of the outcome. This cycle is reminiscent of the previous experience of the mutable reed of community which managed to garner principal tribal adherence to a perspective and way of life and which then further seeks its fulfillment through the persevering elements of protective enclosures and enduring traditions put forth through the use of indoctrination and the materialistic compounds that allow for their fortitude as a tribal foundation and tradition. The cardinal turkey of conquest elects itself as a prodigious example of excited velocity that purges forth into the melee of the battlefield, guarded to bring forth and apprehend the needed resources designed to bring about the foundations that are sought in the next following phase of Nepantla Kali, the fixed house of finances. For this reason, he perceives himself as an architect towards the establishment of a new and stabilized community, when at which point, if successful, will remain as the tour de force in the continual expansion process of empire building. This is the military might behind all cultural religious endeavors, for which in recognizing the inevitable competition from all sides of the table does not fail in the task of winning ceremony with the art of battle, for the congregation and preservation of the cultural legacies that are to be seen throughout the world. Nepantla Kali, the temple house of the middle, 
the fixed house of finances. As the corresponding year sign to the Chinese serpent and the zodiological Taurus, the fixed house or Napantala Kali draws from the previous stratified clan organizations to create a financial hierarchy that can consolidate matters and use them for further negotiations. In a sense, this represents the history and creation of banks as we know them. Like the impenetrable walls of an ancient temple complex, the boundaries of the fixed house encapsulate a shadowy interior of secret dealings and negotiations that can transform or destroy the infrastructure of the world community and economy. In the lives of the people born under this year sign, the ability to control financial decisions can be an all-encompassing goal that consumes the very basis of their value systems, and in certain lowly cases can lead to personal thievery and deceit. The shadowy element of the temple house can therefore be reinforced with this sign position. When not focused on finances, the fixed house is a storehouse of accumulated knowledge that is as varied as it is indispensable. The purpose of accumulating the information is based on practicality and usefulness, and should lead to some form of academic recognition if indeed the contents are true. This is the elite aspect of the fixed house, which sees its personal procedures as the tried and the true, and a cut above the rest, a fact which is demonstrated in the usefulness of the product brought about by a structured accumulation of information over time. This is the theory of temple building brought about over time, proven by the longevity of solid structures as they remain over the centuries. When finally the security that is sought has been brought about, there then is the time and foundation to expand personally through creative enterprises that guarantee further stability. This can then also garner the ability towards procreation, reinsuring the survival of personal principles and religious convictions through the endeavor of genetic offspring. The characteristics of the genetic files of the DNA are held within the cells of this temple house, where they remain guarded by the principles of motherhood and the fecundity of the Earth's entire genetic heritage. The principles of youth and education are found here, along with some of the experiences that guarantee the growth and emergence up towards the target of desirable personal destinations, which have in recent times come to be understood in their most materialistic manifestations. One's home happens to be, in actuality, the set of personal goals that allow for the continual process of personality building that guarantees egotistical contemplation, while the community temple guarantees the perspectives of the collective ego, or the tribe, or nation as a whole through the premise of gathering and securing similarities in being.